Hello and welcome. Today we are applying previous concepts you have learned to make your first interactive game in JavaScript. Let's get started. Today we combine all of the knowledge you've previously learned from the tutorials, data types, uh, conditionals, numbers, how to generate random numbers, how to get user input and use it and handle it. All of those things will come together today as we build your first interactive game. And so we will start out by defining a variable called play game because we need to ask the user if they want to play a game to begin with. And we'll do that with a confirm box that should pop up and we'll say shall we play rock, paper, or scissors. And I'm going to get our code to wrap. And there it already asks if we shall play rock, paper, or scissors, but we're not ready to yet. But I did save the code and so it launched the code right away. And what we need to do from there is check the value of the play game variable. So if play game actually holds a value, in other words, if it is true and has some type of value, it is not undefined, it is not null, then we're going to play the game as the user wants to. But we might as well put a message in an else clause just in case the user has clicked cancel in the confirm and then we could just say something with an alert for the user and say, okay, maybe next time. Now we're ready to play. And since we're ready to play, we need to let the player make a choice. And being courteous, we'll always let the user go first instead of the computer. So we'll say, let player choice now we will issue a prompt to the user asking them to make a choice. Please enter rock, paper, or scissors. And there are code wrapped to the next line. And you can see on line five, it's just a little bit taller because it's taking up a second line. Even though it's just one line of code, Visual Studio Code is wrapping it for us so it doesn't extend further to the right. And now that we've asked for that prompt, we need to handle the data that we get in return. And the very first thing we need to do is check if we received data in return. If the user clicked cancel, we would get null, and we don't want that. So we have to check to find out. And if that player choice variable actually holds a value, which is what we're saying here, then we can continue to play. But if not, we'll assume the user changed their mind. So we'll say, alert, I guess you changed your mind. Maybe next time. But we'll only make it here if player choice has a value. Now we need to assign that value. We need to handle the user input actually and assign that user input after it's handled to our player one variable. And so we will go player choice and we'll trim any white space and we'll set it to lowercase because we don't want to check every possible value for the word rock with the different capitalized letters and lowercase letters. So we set it all to lowercase so we can just check for one specific lowercase value of rock, one specific lowercase value of paper, and one of scissors as well. So we have our player one variable now ready to go, and now we need to find out, is it rock, paper, or scissors? We'll use an if statement. We'll say if player one equals rock. And we only need to check for the lowercase word rock because as we said before, we set it to lowercase, we trim the white space. So we'll just check for that. Now double pipes and that means or. So now we can say or player one 
equals paper or player one equals scissors. And now we can do something if those are true. But this is our third if statement and it's nested inside of our second one. If none of those are true, let's say I just entered my name, we need to return something else. And so at this point we can just say alert, you didn't enter rock, paper, or scissors. But now that we know at this point, player one has actually entered rock, paper, or scissors, we're ready to move forward. And now it's time for the computer to make its choice. We will do that by defining a variable called computer choice. And we're going to set that equal to a random number. If you remember how we define or pick a random number, we'll use the math floor method and then we'll use the math random method and we'll put three in there. We have to add one or remember it would be from zero to two, but we need this to be from one to three. So we have our computer choice and it's going to generate a random number from one to three. And now we can use a ternary statement to assign the computer value of rock, paper, or scissors. And so we'll say let computer, and now we'll start our ternary statement by saying computer choice, and if that equals one, the computer will choose rock. And then this is our else, and our else will just check the next value. So if the computer choice equals two, the computer will choose paper. And now we don't even need to check the computer choice because this is the third and final possibility. So we'll just say scissors. And now the computer has made its choice. And at this point, we are ready to just pull in the logic for rock, paper, scissors. And in the previous conditional tutorials, we did that logic already with an if then else statements. We did switch statements and we did the logic with the ternary operator statements. And that's what I'm going to pull in here. And I'm just going to uh, copy and paste because it would take me a little bit to type it. But let's look in just a second. We'll analyze what I paste in. And I want to move this back out just a little bit. There we go. We'll put a line here. So we're assigning the outcome to the variable result. And at first we check to see if player one has tied with the computer. And if so, result equals tie game. And then the else of the ternary operator checks another condition. So we're chaining ternary operators, just like we did with computer choice. And here we're checking to see if player one equals rock and computer equals paper. And if so, we're going to return a template literal uh, string. And that is, we use the back ticks to start those. That is because uh, we want to include the value the player one chose, and we want to include the value that the computer chose and show that the computer wins, but it wouldn't do any good to just show the computer wins. The user would go, why does the computer win? I don't even know what the computer chose. And so that's why we use a template literal string to show what each player or person in the game and computer in the game uh, chose and then what the outcome is. And we follow that logic through for if the player one had paper and the computer had scissors, or if the player one had scissors and the computer had rock, all of these possibilities lead to the computer winning. So when we get to the final one, the only possibility left is player one winning. And we issue that value here. And it comes back into the result variable. And then we just use an alert 
to let the user know who won the game and what values were chosen. But after that, we can go ahead and ask the user if they want to play again. So let's define one more variable, let play again equal, and let's use a confirm. And we'll just ask play again with a question mark. And now we can use a simple one line ternary statement to handle this action. So we'll just evaluate play again. And if true, which confirm returns a true or false. If true, we're going to use something you haven't seen yet, and that is location with the reload method. And this will reload the web page, which will start the game over. And if false, we'll use an alert and just say, okay, thanks for playing. And let's save all of that. Prettier reformatted the code just a little bit for me. That's the prettier extension in Visual Studio Code. So let's look at this top to bottom before we start. We're going to ask if we want to play a game. If we want to play a game, we start to play. But if not, way down here at the bottom, we'll say, else, okay, maybe next time. The next step is if, yes, we've decided to play our game, we ask the player to enter rock, paper, or scissors. If they enter a value, we're going to play our game. But if they don't, they've clicked cancel, and that means we get the alert, I guess you changed your mind, maybe next time. Up here, we'll assume they went ahead and entered a value, and now we need to check if they actually entered rock, paper, or scissors. If they did, the game proceeds. Mm -hmm. But if they didn't, for some reason, our else here catches that, and it just says you didn't enter rock, paper, or scissors. However, if they did enter one of those values that we can work with, then we let the computer generate a random number and with that random number, we make a choice of rock, paper, or scissors for the computer. And then we evaluate the game. Now that player one and computer both have their rock, paper, or scissors. And we use this ternary statement to go through the game logic. And we get to the bottom of the logic and we alert the player to who won the game and what each player chose. And then we ask the player if they want to play again. And if they don't, they get OK, thanks for playing. And if they do, the game reloads and starts over. So make sure this is saved. And click Cancel here. Reload, and we're ready to play. And you can see at the top of this confirm, it has the website address, which is my local IP number, and then a port number of 5500, and that is with the live server extension in Visual Studio Code. And it says, shall we play rock, paper, or scissors? Well, this first time, let's just cancel and make sure we got that logic right. It says, okay, maybe next time. And it's done. So let's reload. Shall we play? We'll say, okay, let's play. So enter rock, paper, or scissors. Well, maybe we'll just cancel. I guess you changed your mind. Maybe next time. Let's reload again. Shall we play rock, paper, or scissors? Okay. Enter rock, paper, or scissors. I'm going to enter Dave because I'm just not thinking about the game. And it says you didn't enter rock, paper, or scissors. So far, all of our logical if-then statements are working correctly. We'll reload. This time, we'll go ahead and play. And we'll enter RO in caps and then CK in lowercase for rock. And as you can see, our code works and player one chose rock in all lowercase. Computer chose paper, the computer wins. We'll say okay. And ask if we want to play again. Well, let's check our cancel first. It says okay, thanks for playing. That also worked correctly. Let's reload again. Yes, we'll play again. This time we'll choose paper. And computer chose rock, so player one wins. Seems to be working correctly. Play again, this time we'll say yes. 
And yes, it reloaded the page and it says, shall we play rock, paper, or scissors? Now this is one area our program might be able to improve upon because it's asking if we want to play again. And then it's immediately following that by loading the game and asking if we want to play. But that's not a big deal right now, so we'll continue to play. And this time we'll choose scissors. And computer chose rock and the computer wins. Well, that wraps it up. I'll scroll back through the code. And of course you can pause the screen and look at any part you want to. Move it down just a little bit. And scroll on down to the bottom. But now you can see how the logic works and how we've actually made this an interactive game. Congratulations on completing your first game. And I bet you already have ideas for games you would like to make that follow a similar format to this one. The best thing you can do is practice and make something of your own at this point. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.